Cytoreductive surgery combined with HIPEC is easily one of the most challenging surgeries one might go through in a lifetime. However, its benefits are improved quality of life and increased life expectancy. I would like to present to you the idea of what a typical hospitalization is like for our patients. The surgery itself can be very lengthy and arduous, but we believe that you as the patient, your family, and your loved ones are a vital part of our team. Therefore, it is a priority that we educate you and keep you informed every step of the way. Although your hospitalization may last from 10 to 14 days, your recovery time may be six to eight weeks. That is, it may take that long for you to feel like yourself again. Many have traveled a great distance and are in unfamiliar surroundings. We understand this and realize that you might experience an emotional roller coaster. We hope to educate you in regard to this process and make your, your experience as positive as possible. At the UPMC, we use the team approach to care for our patients. The team consists of our attending surgeons, fellows, residents, interns, phys physicians' assistants, and nurse practitioners, and of course you. We utilize the experience of nursing, social service, nutrition, pharmacy, and other disciplines of medicine as well. One may have experience with one or all of these along the way. Unique to our setting is unrestricted visiting hours, both in the ICU and on the general floor. Most patients are initially evaluated in our clinic and you are referred by your surgeon, your medical oncologist, your primary care physician, um, or even yourself. Typically, this is a long um, appointment, and we have an in-depth assessment of your disease process, other medical problems, psychological or social issues that might affect your outcome. This serves as an exchange time of information for um, questions, and we encourage you to bring a list of questions with you. At this time, you're also given an opportunity to meet the nurses that will care for you, and even tour the nursing units where you will, where you will recover. During the initial appointment, it might be decided that you require systemic therapy, chemotherapy, to shrink your tumor. The reason for this is that sometimes shrinking the tumor makes it easier for it to be taken out surgically. Also, we might think that you need more nutritional support and require you to have um, IV nutrition or just beef up what you're eating. Both of these will make the outcome better in the long run. If this is the case, we might ask for you to come back for another appointment. Most folks are admitted to the hospital the day before their surgery. At that time, you would undergo IV hydration, a bowel prep, and last-minute blood work. At this time, you would also meet our house staff and physician's assistants or nurse practitioners who will answer last-minute questions. You will also be um, assessed by the anesthesia department. And the acute pain service will evaluate you for pain management needs. They manage your pain during the immediate post-op period and for up to six days after surgery. At this time, they will offer paravertebral nerve blocks. And these are catheters that are placed into your back um, in the muscle layer that pro provide non-narcotic pain relief to you after surgery. The reason for using this is that the the non-narcotic pain relief decreases the risk of confusion. It does not hinder your ability to walk, and it does not interfere with bowel or bladder function. In addition to this, you would have patient-controlled anesthesia or a PCA pump that gives you narcotic pain medication. Typically, this is a time of heightened anxiety, and we know that. The physicians and nursing staff and other participants in your team are dedicated to relieving your anxiety and making you as comfortable as possible. Again, this is a time to ask questions and we suggest you bring your list with you. 
if you are coming from out of town, we have family house or area hotels that can assist with lodging. The day of surgery, you are, you are taken to the preoperative holding area around 6.30 in the morning or an hour before your surgery. The anesthesiologist and nurse anesthetist will meet with you at this time and do a last-minute assessment. You also have your nerve blocks placed at this time. As stated, your family will be updated regularly by either a phone call or the patient update board in the waiting area. Follow, following your surgery, you will go to the intensive care unit for at least one or, or two days. The length of time spent in the intensive care unit is based on your time for close monitoring. This is very individualized. Everybody needs a different amount of this monitoring. Once you are, you are stable, our nurses help you out of bed. This is very important. They will also help you with the incentive spirometer, which is a handheld machine that helps you to take deep breaths and open up your lungs and thereby preventing pneumonia. This is a very busy time for you. We will be checking blood work very frequently, monitoring your vital signs, and measuring input and output. You will also feel and look very puffy, and this is from all the intravenous fluids you receive in the operating room. This is normal, um, and it dissipates over the next few days. You may also have several drains placed. One is a nasogastric tube. Um, this goes into your stomach and drains fluid from your stomach so you don't get sick. You may also have Jackson Pratt drains, chest tubes, feeding tubes, or um, larger IVs. And these are all removed over the course of your hospitalization. However, um, some people may go home with a drain in place. And if this occurs, home care nurses are available to help you uh, manage these at home. After the intensive care unit, you go to the general surgical floor or the step-down unit. This time, um, we are concentrating on mobility, getting you out of bed, getting you stronger, as well as awaiting bowel function. Bowel function typically returns in about five days. At this time, we can remove your NG tube and start a clear liquid diet. It's at this time that your diet is generally advanced from clear liquids to soft. Occasionally, however, the bowels may slow down, um, making it necessary for you to go back to the previous diet. And uh, this is more common when you have the chemoperfusion done in your belly. Also on the floor, um, your nerve blocks are removed and you get switched over to oral medications. The time on the general floor is usually around seven days. However, if there are complications, um, you may need to stay a little longer. Again, we monitor vital signs and the input and output, but it's in a less intense environment. There are some possible complications related to the surgery. However, the, ma the vast majority of our patients do very well um, and have none of these. We will discuss ileus, which is a sleeping of your bowels, the need for supplemental nutrition, poor wound healing, diverting ostomy, which is not actually a complication, but um, should be reviewed, uh, as well as bleeding. When one undergoes any type of surgery, be it laparoscopic with a camera or open, um, an ileus occurs. Again, this is simply your intestines are asleep from the anesthesia. Um, the length of time of your ileus is um, directly proportional to the amount of time that you have general anesthesia the amount of work we do on your bowels and your intestines, um, the amount of previous surgery you have, have had, um, as well as the use of the hot chemo or the intraperitoneal chemo perfusion. Keeping all of this in mind, some of our patients have had all of these, and therefore um, they are at increased risk for a prolonged ileus or sleeping of the bowels. At the very end of your surgery, while you're asleep, we put in an NG tube. Um, again, this is placed in your stomach, through your nose, into your stomach to allow the juices to drain. 
um, from your stomach so that you don't feel sick to your stomach. Typically, this remains in place until you start to pass gas or have a bowel movement. Um, remembering that the perfusion may make this a longer process, everybody is different, um, but the tube does eventually come out. Um, we want the NG tube to stay in place to allow things to open up naturally, and if we've hooked things together in your intestines, we want them to heal as best as possible as well. So if you have had um, any small intestine or um, large intestine colon removed, we may leave the NG tube in place a bit longer. Everybody is uh, looked at as an individual, however, and that decision is made um, based on how you're doing. If, however, you have a stoma, an ileostomy or colostomy, we may take out the NG tube a day or so earlier, and that's because that diversion of stool with the ostomy protects our, protects our new hookup. So we may be inclined to remove it a little sooner. Again, um, the hot chemotherapy may slow your bowels down. So the analogy that I use is like having a sunburn on the inside of you. So if you can imagine getting hot chemo in your belly and having sunburn on your organs or the lining in your, your belly, it helps you to understand that there's um, inflammation that slows things down. This brings us to um, the next possible complication, which is need for supplemental nutrition. Again, the majority of our patients do not need this. However, if your intestines are slow to awaken or you have poor wound healing or had poor nutrition prior to surgery, you might need um, extra help with nutrition afterwards. We typically use a, our nutrition team, which is a physician, a pharmacist, and nutritionalist to help us with this. Total parenteral nutrition, or, or TPN, is IV food um, that you could receive that would give you up to 100% of your requirements on a daily basis. In order to receive this, you need a special IV in place, um, and you could actually go home with this. So we would start it in the hospital. You could go home with the larger IV and with the TPN um, or to some sort of nursing center or rehab afterwards. The other type of feeding we might use is called enteral nutrition, and this uses your intestines and not the IV. This is done by using either the NG tube or nasogastric tube, a gastrostomy tube in, in your stomach, or a jejunostomy tube, which is in your small bowel. This might be put, uh, placed during surgery if the surgeon feels that you will have the, the prolonged ileus or the sleeping bowels after surgery um, and need this type of feeding. Or it could be done at a later date while you're in the hospital. In any event, you can go home with this as well. You're taught how to use it. Um, and in both instances with the TPN or this enteral feeding, um, we try to have you eat as normally as you can to get you off of it quickly. The next thing we'll cover is poor um, wound healing. Unfortunately, uh, the nature of the beast when dealing with these um, big cancers is that you can have poor wound healing. Again, if you've had previous surgery, you have um, poor nutritional status, um, and you get the hot chemo, sometimes your wound does not heal as well. Um, we may need to open your wound a little bit and let some fluid drain and then give you a special dressing. Um, it's not that common, but it's easily remedied, um, and we are well equipped to handle this. In this instance, we would teach you how to do the dressing and have home care help you as well. Um, sometimes you would end up on um, antibiotics. Uh, with the high pec or the hot chemo in the belly, a fistula may occur. Um, a fistula, easily defined, is just a tunnel from one cavity or organ to another that you don't want. Um, and when this occurs, you sometimes need a special dressing called a VAC, V-A-C dressing, to pull the fluid off and protect your skin. Sometimes you need to go on the IV food, the total parenteral nutrition. 
Um, but again, we are well equipped to help you with this. There's a, a lot of education and we send up, set up home care as well. Um, bleeding is another complication that may occur, um, although it is very rare. Um, when you're in surgery, sometimes you may require blood transfusions and a lot of IV fluids. And this will alter your blood's ability to clot normally. So it will increase the risk of needing a reoperation or blood transfusion down the line. But this risk um, decreases as time goes by, um, and we do not see it very often. We measure your, um, your blood counts very closely and your vital signs for these issues. Um, speaking of the diverting stoma, um, again, it is not a complication, but we do this to protect the re-anastomosis or the new connection in your intestines or urinary tract. Um, special education is needed so that you can go home um, and take care of this on your own or with your family. Um, it does allow for proper healing so that there is less chance of any wound infection or fistula. Um, so we use these a little more often nowadays. They're used um, most often if you've had prior surgery on your belly or the chemo perfusion. What I need to highlight with this is that um, you need to be very aggressive with hydration and watching for um, dehydration. Dehydration is the number one reason people come back into the hospital um, when they have an ostomy, an ileostomy or a colostomy. So we teach you how to, um, to notice the signs of dehydration, measure your output, and then take care of decreasing it if need be. These are almost always temporary. I need to stress that, um, in that we can reverse them in six to eight weeks after your surgery. and We have you come back um, and reassess you and do that. And some people will actually have these done um, at home if they live a great distance away and their local surgeon will reverse them. In conclusion, um, I want to stress that you are a valuable part of the team. You are, you are driving the bus, and we need to communicate and educate you, and you need to ask questions so that we know every step of the way what one another are thinking. Um, we take care of the technical side, we do the surgery, we try to get you through this, but you have the hard part. We hope to give you a new lease on life. We hope to give you many years, many quality years ahead. Thank you.